took there. Uh, you know, some of you that I don't pay attention to flying when I should be and start snapping pictures. Like the <laughs> but uh, this is our radar display. You can see that I got my uh, my wingman locked up. So when you lock somebody up, you'll get that display in the HUD. So it helps you. Uh, right here, he's pretty close. It's only like a, less than a mile away. But uh, uh, when someone's 10 miles away, it'd be hard to see. So if you have that box up there, it'll give you some good cueing of where to look in the sky. Uh, your standard airspeed and altitude information there, and then uh, heading, and then you know whatever waypoint you're steering to. And then we also have uh, time down here. We have a GPS uh, time hack, so we get time straight from the uh, satellite, so we will know exactly what uh, what time it is. Uh, right here is kind of nice. This is just ranging from the radar, so 0.6 miles. Uh, if you don't have a radar, we have a uh, our tack in. It's just a navy, but you can also instead of tuning in a, a frequency on the ground, you can tune off of each other. Uh, and it'll bounce back, and uh, you can see there, 0.7, so it's pretty accurate, within 0.1, uh, to tell you how far away you are from your wingman, in case uh, you lose sight and you don't want to run into him, which is a uh, bad day for long ball. Slide. Uh, uh, just took this picture at the tanker. Um, obviously, uh, mid-air refueling extends our range a lot. You'll see this a lot in uh, current conflicts. Um, a lot of tankers overhead, so if uh, Marines or uh, Army troops are engaged on the ground, and uh, they can't wait for aircraft to go all the way back to base and uh, refuel. Uh, they'll have a tanker overhead, so they'll be gone for only you know 10 or 15 minutes uh, instead of all the way to the two hours it takes to get back to base and refuel. Uh, that's a KC-130J uh, uh, tanking off right there. Our, our air refueling probe is off to the side, so that's why the picture's kind of uh, only got part of it. You can't see the probe in the picture, but it's over here, and uh, you just kind of line it up. And it's kind of weird hitting another aircraft with your aircraft, and it's usually something you don't want to do. But, uh, <laughs> When you hear a thing, you kind of have to, so. Slide. Uh, just a picture flying around Japan here on my last deployment. Slide. Uh, this was uh, my first deployment off the uh, USS Tarawa. Um, you see there we've got uh, external tanks on here for uh, regular fuel. Uh, they'll give us an extra uh, 2,000 pounds each, so generally carry two at once when we do carry them. So another 4,000 uh, pounds of gas is going to give us about a 50% increase in our, uh, our capacity. Slide. Uh, this was coming into uh, Wake Island. Uh, when we were deployed to Japan, the only way to get back is to have a, uh, an Air Force tanker drag you back, because uh, you know obviously you can't fly that far. So uh, we just followed the uh, KC-10 there, and then uh, coming into Wake Island here. Next slide. Here's a shot of Wake Island uh, from the air. Again, uh, I'm not paying attention to taking pictures again. Uh, on me. <laughs> slide. What do you mean they drag you back? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, basically. 